Alabama Highway 269, Pumpkin Center, Good Springs, and Gorgas, and then ultimately coming out here, uh, passing north of West Jefferson toward Interstate 22. Interstate 22 runs right here, and that's obviously the major thoroughfare within this polygon. And so we don't advise travel along Interstate 22 from Cordova down to West Jefferson until this thing passes or it dissipates. And hopefully we can come on and say that it's dissipating, but it obviously is not at this point. And again, the Weather Service is now calling this a confirmed tornado because of what you see here, the TDS, a tornado debris signature. Uh, so again, this is for far southern Walker County. Jasper, you're not included. You're not even close to this. Uh, it's south of Parrish, south of Cordova, south of Oakman. Uh, so that's our tornado warning for Walker County. Wanted to show the severe thunderstorm warning for Jefferson here. And again, uh, for those of you in, in Birmingham, your weather radio should have toned that out. And the whole county, all of Jefferson County here is under a severe thunderstorm warning. We'll pop on the reflectivity. And again, you can see the line of storms approaching right here. Uh, the line stretches from uh, near Hansville and Cullman County down to about Sipsey and Empire and Parrish and Walker County, then curving down towards Samantha and Tuscaloosa County. County, then down to Aliceville in Pickens County. And within this line, you could see potential strong straight line winds that might knock down trees and power lines. In fact, we've got severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for parts of Pickens, Tuscaloosa, Walker, uh, all up and down this line here. And of course, Jefferson and parts of Blunt as well. And this line will be coming through Tuscaloosa. It will be coming through Birmingham within the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes or so. And uh, again, this is the tornado warning right here, that little kink in the line. But for most areas, the main concern is going to be from strong straight line winds. Uh, additional isolated tornadoes could form within that line. But if we can, Taylor, let's just peek at Wyndham Springs. And by chance, we'll see if that camera is up. There are side-by-side 2,000-foot -side towers in northeastern Tuscaloosa County, some of the tallest man-made structures in the world. And we own both of those, and we've got a sky cam uh, that's pretty far up on one of those, uh, not quite at 2,000 feet, but at night it's going to be hard to see much. We're just looking for lightning, basically. And I'm interested to see the lightning show that we're getting off of this. And again, the uh, Wyndham Springs Tower is right here. That line is basically on Wyndham Springs. And we're probably going to have a hard time kind of getting our bearings on that. And I don't know if we can see much. Uh, let's take the uh, sky cam full real quick. And again, uh, it's, it's pitch black and, and it's probably pouring rain. I think the rain has started there at the camera site. So about the only thing you'll see some lightning from time to time. Let's go down to uh, the DCH uh, camera in Tuscaloosa, Taylor, and point that thing north. And we'll see what that looks like as the line approaches Tuscaloosa from the north. And uh, again, uh, don't know if we'll be able to see much at all. Maybe not. And if we can't, that's okay. So let's just go back to the radar. And again, it, like we've talked about, it's going to be hard to see anything here in the middle of the night. But again, we're watching this little kink in the line right here that would represent potential for what could be a spin-up tornado within that line. Uh, th these things cause great weeping and gnashing of teeth in weather offices. These QLCS tornadoes, middle of the night. And this is a common thing here. Th this is nothing new for uh, Alabama. Uh, but again, that's your warning right here. And again, here's Interstate 22. This is Jasper here. Carbon Hill is here. And of course, and let me just say this. Once this line passes, you're done with it. Severe weather risk is over. So for Fayette, Winfield, Guin, Carbon Hill, Haleyville, Hamilton, Sulligent, Vernon, you're done with any severe weather for tonight. You can go to bed, not worry about it. Uh, the concern is going to be south and east of that line. Let's take a closer look again at the uh, situation here and the potential tornado. So we will uh, put the debris tracker on here, and we're not seeing it now. And again, the velocity showing really nothing. And understand with these QLCS tornadoes, they're just boogers. They might last for five minutes, maybe. And uh, they're very, by the time a warning goes out, it's down and it's already lifted. And uh, we're just not that good at these things. You know, there's some things in this science we just can't do. And, and dealing with these short-lived, spin-up QLCS tornadoes, it is so hard. And if you try and catch all of them, you're playing whack-a-mole. Uh, but in this case, there was that one kink, and we saw the debris being lofted for a couple of volume scans. But it sure looks like that it's beginning to go away. 
Uh, so again, the, the warning will stay in effect. And what happens, the Weather Service will watch a series of volume scans to see if it comes back and it's off the board. Wow, that was quick. Just like that, they come and they go quick. I love it when Taylor draws that X on here. When, when she draws the X, that means it's over. So the Weather Service has already canceled the tornado warning for Walker County. We're going to stay here for a little bit in that uh, uh, we are at a point now where the line of storms is approaching Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, and we'll just kind of ride with you while that happens to see if we have another spin up involved here. But that was a classic QLCS tornado, and I do think it was there for a few minutes and it just went away. Uh, and again, often by the time a warning goes out, it's already gone. It's just so hard to deal with these things. And sometimes you're tempted just to blanket the line with these severe thunderstorm warnings and say a brief tornado could touch down, which is probably the best way to handle that. But whatever, we've got severe thunderstorm warnings in effect now for parts of Pickens, Tuscaloosa, Walker, uh, the southern part of Cullman County, uh, all of Jefferson, parts of Blunt for the line of storms coming through. And again, the line of storms will be capable of producing strong straight line winds that might exceed 60 miles per hour in spots. So maybe the Birmingham camera, Taylor, uh, if we can look back into the line, maybe Alabama Power or uh, the one that's on Children's of Alabama, that's, uh, that's kind of gives you a good point of reference right there. And uh, they turn the Christmas lights off. I, you know, I, I've never noticed that, the Christmas lights on the Regents Tower, the, the tree. They go off and then they and the come roof. back on right at 4 30 a.m. Ah, right as we're starting the newscast yeah, Dennis, in the morning. Dennis says they're recharging the batteries. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, but again, you can see the low clouds and um, let, let's kind of point that thing over maybe to the northwest a little bit. That's due north and we'll go a little to the northwest and see if we can see some of the lightning. And uh, these storms have really dropped, uh, produced a lot of cloud to ground lightning tonight. And again, you just can't see much. I mean, it's so frustrating where we've got these big storms in the middle of the night and they're all rain wrapped and you just can't see much at all. We know from social science studies that you tend to take action quickly if you see it, if you see the weather, see it on a sky cam, see it through a live stream on a dash cam. But if it's on radar, you think about it, you kind of delay sometimes. And that's why we like to have these cameras on the uh, weather. But again, in the middle of the night like this, it is so hard to do. So let's go back to the radar. If you're just joining us, uh, we uh, came on at 1230, 11 minutes ago. And right as we came on the air, the Weather Service in Birmingham issued a tornado warning for Southern Walker County. It lasted less than 10 minutes. The Weather Service canceled the warning. Everything went away. We have no tornado warnings at this point, but we do have severe thunderstorm warnings uh, for this line of severe storms pushing through parts of North and West Alabama from near Cullman down to the southern part of Smith Lake, down to about Dora and Summerton, Samantha and Aliceville. And as the line comes through, it's going to be capable of producing strong straight line winds. And the Weather Service has blanketed the area in advance of that line with severe thunderstorm warnings uh, that are in effect uh, for parts of Pickens, Tuscaloosa, Jefferson, Walker, Cullman and Blunt counties. And uh, what's happening, the line of storms is going to be encountering increasingly unstable air through central Alabama. And I think the main threat here will be from strong straight line winds, but there could be an isolated tornado. So let's look at our tornado watch. Again, the tornado watch is in effect for parts of central and uh, west Alabama in effect until 6 a.m. And ooh, that's me talking to myself here. Uh, I was about to uh, uh, get our live coverage on the social platforms posted to a few other pages here. And again, we thank our social media team for staying up with us. Understand whenever we're up in the middle of the night, we have a big support crew that's up in the middle of the night. Uh, journalists, uh, digital side, production, engineering. So thanks to everybody in the building for staying up with us. So here's our tornado watch until 6 a.m. And uh, this includes Lamar Fayette, Walker, Jefferson, Shelby, Coosa, Elmore, and Montgomery counties and counties back off to the west. But again, once this line passes, you're done with it. This is the last line. Now, I do note we got a tornado warning down here for parts of Choctaw County. So I want to go down to the radar and look at this. Uh, this thing has looked pretty nasty. Uh, and uh, let me also say the Weather Service is posting a flash flood warning for parts of 
Jefferson and Shelby counties. We'll talk about that in just a second. But again, you can see uh, strong evidence of a tornado that's going to be passing just south of Butler, crossing Highway 17. Alabama 17 is that long north-south run that's near the Mississippi state line, runs from near Mobile all the way to the Shoals. And this possible tornado is about to cross Highway 17 south of Butler. And if it stays on that trajectory, that will likely enter the southwestern part of Marengo County. So if you are in places like Nanafalaya, Half Acre, Sweetwater, Dixon's Mills, Octagon. Just keep a close eye on this. Those are communities down here in the southern part of Marengo County. This is US 43, Alabama 10 runs right through here. Uh, and again, that's uh, this is where the air is really unstable down here. Uh, the dew points are probably approaching 70 down here in parts of southwest Alabama tonight in advance of the uh, approaching line. And it's out there by itself. It's not competing for moisture with other storms in a line. And uh, these are the ones that will be problematic. And again, this is not in our television market. Uh, uh, Choctaw County is in the Meridian, Mississippi TV market. Marengo County is in the Montgomery TV market. But again, we're streaming live as well as being on television. And a lot, a lot of folks watch us down here. So we'll try and take care of you uh, as well. And really, at this hour of the day, we go back to regular TV programming. They probably got a Ginzu knife commercial or pocket fisherman or something. I'd love to have a pocket fisherman. Have you ever <laughs> seen those things, Taylor? They're, they're great. I mean, the pocket fisherman. I've always wanted one, and I've never had. Dennis says they're very expensive now. But uh, anyway, so uh, Taylor, what's, what's up? We've got a flash flood warning here. Uh, what's going on with that? Yeah, so that is new. That is going to be a flash flood warning that covers much of I-65, basically from Fultondale all the way down through Alabaster. And uh, this is going to last through 3.45 a.m. And we've seen heavy rain throughout the day and within this box here. And then I, I think this is partly in anticipation, too, of this next round of rain that is on the way for uh, these locations. So this is going to include locations like Birmingham, Vestavia Hills, Hoover, uh, Pelham, Alabaster. In this blue box, that's now a new flash flood warning that's going to last for the next three hours. Uh, so we could have flooding be an issue, and that's going to uh, be coming at a time where, of course, it's dark outside, so it's already hard to see. Uh, so if you don't have to be outside driving around, just stay indoors. Uh, I know sometimes you can't avoid it. You do have to maybe go to work or whatever you have to do at uh, that time in the morning. If you do happen to come upon a road that's covered with water, make sure you're turning around. Uh, I know it's inconvenient, takes a little bit of extra time, but it really it truly could save your life. Uh, one of the biggest problems we run into is folks trying to drive over uh, roads that are covered with water, and it's, it's hard to tell how deep that water is, and it's also hard to know what the road looks like underneath it. I did want to pop on here some of the radar estimates for rain accumulation just to kind of get an idea of how much rain some of these spots have seen, man, across lots of uh, locations north of I-20, we've got a lot of the yellows and the oranges showing up. That's over three inches of rain. Uh, we see some of that showing up as well within that blue box. But as I mentioned, I think that the reason they've gone ahead with that flash flood warning is not only because of the rain that we've already had, but because of the rain that is anticipated to come here pretty soon with this next line that is just now starting to cross over from Walker County into Jefferson County. Uh, so we'll be watching that carefully. That could certainly cause some flooding problems for the Birmingham metro area, uh, stretching down through Hoover and into Shelby County all the way as far south as Alabaster. And that's going to be right along I-65, which means uh, hard driving conditions. It's going to be raining heavily, and we're going to have to monitor for any kind of street uh, streams, creeks, rivers, anything like that to kind of start rising as we get this next round of rain. All right, so again, it's uh, 1247. Uh, James Spann with Taylor Sorello back here in the weather office. And again, we are in the process of uh, dealing with this line of severe storms. And we have no tornado warnings for the northern half of the state. And once this line passes, you're done with a severe weather threat. So if you are in Fayette, Hamilton, Winfield, Vernon, Sulligent, Jasper, Carbon Hill, Haleyville, Double Springs, you can go to bed.
Uh, it's still going to rain. There could be some thunder, but you're done with severe weather. The concern, it's along and in advance of these lines here. The big one from Cullman down to Northport and then down to about to Aliceville and these other ones in East Alabama. Once all of this passes, you're done with it uh, and it's over. Uh, so we've got the uh, line of storms coming into the city of Tuscaloosa right now. Uh, did we ever get our camera there, Taylor? Uh, yeah, let's very interested to see if we can look, look north into that. Uh, so let's, yeah, this is the uh, SkyCam that's uh, atop DCH Regional Medical Center in Tuscaloosa at the intersection of University Boulevard and McFarland Boulevard. And again, uh, uh, it looks like the lightning output has decreased a little bit, uh, although what we're showing on the counter here, 449 strikes in the last 10 minutes within that line. So it might be we've just got so much rain and uh, uh, the clouds are so low and so thick, we just can't see that much. But again, uh, that's the line approaching Tuscaloosa. And these are going to be noisy. They're going to be windy. Uh, we could see strong straight line winds, maybe gusting in spots to 50, 60 miles an hour. Uh, so be aware of that. And again, that's uh, looking down University Boulevard toward Alberta City. And we'll kind of swing it back around as we look more to the north. And again, you can see the uh, lightning. And again, that will be more impressive over the next few minutes. But again, that's a look at the line of storms coming into uh, uh, Tuscaloosa. Um, and for those that are just joining us also, we've had some tornado damage tonight. Uh, the, the more significant damage coming out of Utah and Akron in uh, Green and Hale counties. Uh, earlier tonight, and uh, we had a live report from Megan Scarano, who's down in uh, Utah. They're, they're, uh, Bill and Megan are moving over to Akron, and we'll be getting some uh, uh, hopefully updated video from them soon. In fact, Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Dennis, if you can take WEX05, uh, I want to show uh, quickly this is some of the damage near Akron in Hale County near the Warrior River, and I'm afraid we're going to see a lot of damage here around Akron. Uh, old Lock 8 on the river uh, back over toward uh, Utah, and that's just an example of what people are dealing with in the northern part of Hale County tonight. So that's a uh, one example of what these things are doing. So we've got to be weather aware for a few more hours, I promise. Once once we get to 3, 4, 5 o'clock, things will kind of settle down for our part of the state. So let's go back to the radar. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, we've got a line of severe storms from near Holly Pond, then curving down to the Walker Jefferson County line and then into northern Tuscaloosa County around Northport Lake Tuscaloosa then back into Pickens County. The main concern here strong straight line winds severe thunderstorm warnings kind of blanket the entire line for parts of Tuscaloosa Jefferson Cullman and Blunt counties. That's a very curious uh, flash flood warning here. They basically drew a flash flood warning right up and down I-65. I would assume that's an anticipation of this line coming in. Why it's not a little wider than that, that's uh, interesting. But again, uh, there's a flash flood warning in effect for the Birmingham Metro, downtown Birmingham, and the uh, I-65 corridor down to uh, Alabaster near the Shelby County Airport. And obviously, this is not the greatest night to be driving. But again, right now, we don't have any tornado warnings for our part of the state. We have severe thunderstorm warnings in effect. Again, for Tuscaloosa County, parts of Jeff, like all of Jefferson, uh, that small part of uh, Walker, parts of Blunt, parts of Cullman County, and again, that will be moving on to the south and ultimately coming through counties like Shelby and Talladega and Bibb and Green and Hale later. But let's go down to uh, Marengo now. We do have uh, the Weather Service posting a tornado warning for the southern half of Marengo County for this severe storm that is capable of producing a tornado that's coming out of Choctaw County. That's on the river near Pennington down here. And again, that'll be crossing over into South Marengo. Demopolis is not in the polygon. Linden is. And again, this is US 43 here. Providence is here. Linden here. Octagon, Sweetwater, Half Acre, Nanafalaya. Uh, Thomaston is over here. Thomaston's in the polygon. Dayton is in the polygon. Uh, so just understand that if you are in really, this almost runs up to near Fawnsdale. Uh, but again, this is Alabama Highway 28. Thomaston here. Dayton here. This is Magnolia. Uh, Dixon's Mills. Uh, Sweetwater, Nanafalaya, Half Acre is right here. So all of these places in the Polygon in South Marengo County. So uh, if you know somebody that lives down here, you might call them and just let them know that you got a tornado warning. And the, the radar coverage is just not that good down here. The radar beam is way off the ground. This is one of these holes we've talked about where we need a radar back in service around Meridian, Mississippi or York, Alabama. 
to provide low level coverage here. We don't have that, but again, we've got a pretty good idea. There could be a tornado here. So again, potential for a tornado crossing the Tom Bigby, a little south of Pennington. And again, that'll be coming up through South Marengo County. This is Alabama Highway 10 right here. Nanafalaya, Sweetwater, Dixon's Mills, all those communities along Alabama Highway 10. That's US 43 right there. So just be aware the warning is in effect for the southern half of Marengo County, and that is in effect until 145 this morning. And uh, again, that's uh, for about the next uh, 50 minutes or so. Uh, so that is our one tornado warning. And again, Marengo County is in the Montgomery television market, but a lot of people are watching us on uh, the social platforms. We're streaming live on YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, early this morning and, of course, on ABC3340.com. But up this way, the concern, it's that long line of storms. And I can tell the way Denise is looking at me. She wants me to change my mic. I, I, <laughs> she, she, she's, she's got that look. So, Taylor, you... I'll let you take it for a minute while Denise uh, ch changes her. No, no, she's very efficient. That, that, she's the greatest. We love a good op audio operator. We're very thankful for you, Denise. Uh, I'll take over for a second here. We're going to go over uh, this line. We've got this strong line of thunderstorms for the moment. For our part of the state, we do not have any tornado warnings. However, we do have severe thunderstorm warnings that cover portions of Pickens, Tuscaloosa, Jefferson, and Blunt counties. Oh, also Coleman County as well a small portion of Coleman County, and this is going to be for the possibility of winds over 60 miles per hour. So as this line moves through, it is going to get windy. We're also seeing a lot of lightning with this line, so it's going to get loud. You're going to hear the thunder. Um, you're going to have a lot of, of lightning, and then the rain's going to be very heavy as well. Uh, for the moment, Hail doesn't look to be too much of a concern with this line. It's mainly coming from a wind threat, uh, but this is going to be slowly marching towards the southeast. It's actually going to be moving into the Birmingham Metro here pretty soon. And what you'll also notice on this map is that blue box. That blue box is a flash flood warning, and that covers portions of Jefferson and Shelby County right along uh, I-65. That is where we are anticipating the, po the possibility of some flooding issues as this line moves through. We've already seen a lot of heavy rain at, with some of those first rounds that moved through a little bit earlier in the day. And so any additional rainfall could cause uh, some flooding issues, especially along creeks, streams, rivers, low lying areas, those poor drainage areas. If you live in a spot where you know those roads flood pretty easily when we get heavy rain events, uh, you could be one of those folks that does experience some issues overnight tonight into early tomorrow. If you don't have to be out driving around tonight. Just stay in until this system passes. Uh, but for now, once again, no tornado warnings across central Alabama at this point. We do have one tornado warning just to our south or a new tornado warning. We actually have a uh, pair of tornado warnings uh, that include uh, portions of Marengo County stretching back into parts of Clark County also into parts of uh, Choctaw County. It's for this storm right here. It's it, we're looking really high up into this storm. It's really far away from our radar sites, uh, but there is a signal of some broad rotation. And so for that reason, the National Weather Service has decided to extend that tornado warning to include much of Marengo County. That warning lasting through 1:45 a.m. But remember, this is south of our area, our, our television market. We're still keeping a close eye on it, though. Uh, if you have friends or family that live in Marengo County, make sure you just let them know that they need to be getting to their safe place if they live in Marengo County in or south of the city of Linden. We'll see if the storm can maintain its strength as it continues on an eastward track. Uh, but for the time being, our main concern is this line of thunderstorms here. Uh, we are starting to see a little bit more lightning from our Children's of Alabama camera. If we can take our sky cam here, uh, you can see those low clouds moving in. Of course, now that we're taking the camera, we're not seeing much in the way of lightning, but uh, at times we have seen quite a bit of lightning from this camera within the last few minutes. As those storms get closer, uh, we are going to see, I'm sure, more lightning as well on this camera view. Oh, we have a new tornado warning. That includes parts of Blunt County, and it does include the city of Aniana. So if you live in Aniana, uh, take shelter now. You are in that new polygon here. Yeah, this is going to be in effect until 1.30. So uh, this is a tornado warning for Blunt County. 
And again, this is within that line. And again, these are these QLCS tornadoes, and these are very problematic to deal with. But that's your tornado. It's near Locust Fork. That's Highway 79, Locust Fork, and Cleveland here. This is US 231 that goes back over to Aniana. Uh, and again, within this polygon, you can see we do have Cleveland. Uh, Bluntsville is not in the polygon, by the way. Cleveland is, Locust Fork is, Aniana is. Uh, Rosa is here on Highway 231. This is all good right here. Uh, Susan Moore, which is right up here, is in the Polygon. I was at Susan Moore School today. Uh, but again, I, I know it is, goodness, we, we hate to ask people to do things here at, at uh, 1 a.m., but we're asking you to do something. If you are in this Polygon in Blunt County, respect the Polygon and get into a small room on the lowest floor near the center away from windows, and you're going to wear a helmet. It could be a bathroom, a closet, a hallway, but a small interior room, lowest floor, and if you live in a mobile home, you can't be in a mobile home during a tornado warning polygon, and you can't be in a car. The worst possible place is to be a car or a manufactured home. So you need to go to your shelter, a business that's open 24-7. We encourage people to think about that this morning, about what you would do if we had to do this in the middle of the night. And we're doing this in the middle of the night with potential for a tornado here in Blunt County. This will probably not last long. These QLCS tornadoes are typically short-lived. And they're really hard to warn for, but uh, the Weather Service is going to try and do that this morning. So again, this uh, possible tornado is about to cross uh, uh, Alabama Highway 79, which is right here near or just north of Locust Fork, most likely between Locust Fork and Cleveland, and then coming out really toward uh, Aniana, which is, of course, the largest city in, in, the, uh, in Blunt County, the county seat. Uh, and from there, it's going to keep on moving perhaps over toward Etowah County, but I don't think it's going to last that long. Uh, so let's look at our correlation coefficient product, see if we have any debris being lofted here. And not really, this is noise. So at this point, we're not seeing that, but there still could be a tornado there. So this is a radar indicated tornado uh, for Blunt County. And again, the tornado warning in effect until 1.30 uh, for Blunt County. Uh, and again, we're going to focus on this. We also have South Marengo County under a tornado warning, but they're served by TV stations out of Montgomery and Blunt County obviously belongs to us and we'll uh, focus on this and we'll go back to Marengo County in just a bit. But again, uh, Taylor is drawing the potential path of the tornado and it's within a line of storms. It is uh, typically not a long lived type tornado and these develop within these lines. They don't last long, but they can produce a lot of damage and uh, we have to respect that. Uh, the polygon does not include rim lap, by the way. Uh, or Selfville, Dallas Selfville doesn't include Bluntsville, does not include Sneed. Okay, Th those places are not in the polygon. This is your concern right here. And again, uh, Aniana is basically right in the middle of this polygon. Uh, so please wake your kids up, wake your dog up, wake the cat up, get them into that small bathroom or your shelter, whatever that happens to be in your house. Put a helmet on them. Again, a bicycle helmet is perfect. If your kids play sports, a batting helmet, a motorcycle helmet, anything like that, football helmet, and that greatly mitigates your chance of being seriously injured if you take a hit from a tornado. And this won't last long, and we'll give you an all clear just as soon as we can, but uh, that is the best possible thing that you can do for you and your family. Uh, so again, uh, here we are at 101 a.m., and we've got potential for a tornado near or just north of Locust Fork. Locust Fork School sits right about the LO right there. That's where the school is located. And again, you can see that rotation is crossing Highway 79, basically just north of the uh, school in Locust Fork. And from there, it's going to be cutting across over toward uh, Aniana and Highway 75. Uh, most likely, this is going to stay a little south of uh, US 231 right here. Cleveland here, Rosa here. This is Aniana. And again, uh, this is moving more east than northeast, and that most likely will take it really right toward uh, Aniana. Uh, so again, if you're uh, up with us and if you maybe know somebody that lives in this polygon, you might want to call them or text them. And I know you're thinking, I don't want to call my friend at 102 a.m., but again, it's the right thing to do. And if they get mad at you, tell them just to get mad at me because, again, that's what we are asking folks to do here early this morning because a lot of people do not get the warnings in the middle of the night. It's one of our greatest concerns. We have these middle of the night events. People think they're going to hear a siren or they're going to hear something that they'll never hear. Uh, and they don't have a weather radio. This is why weather radios are crucial. That will wake you up. 
And again, hopefully this will be gone soon. We had a, a warning like this in Southern Walker County earlier this morning, and that warning lasted less than 10 minutes. I mean, it was over quick and hopefully this will be the same. And again, uh, Taylor, you're watching for signs of debris and, and we're not seeing that and, and apparently no damage so far to your knowledge. Uh, so far, I haven't seen any reports of any damage. Uh, looking at this, uh, this velocity signature here, this does look to be a fairly broad area of rotation, but just because with these QLCS tornadoes, they can tighten up so quickly. Uh, understandable why the National Weather Service, they're great at their job. They do a great job with these warnings. Understandable why they would go ahead, post that warning in case this does start to tighten up uh, in these radar scans moving forward. But for the moment, this this is a little bit broader of a circulation with the potential to become stronger here in the next few minutes as it does pass eastward. And this system is moving east at 45 miles per hour. So it's uh, going to be moving eastward here towards the general direction of Aniana. You see some of those bright greens. That's where we have some of the strong winds. Those are winds going towards the radar. Those reds are going away from the radar. Uh, and I just keep flipping on this uh, correlation coefficient product here, this debris tracker, just to try to see if we have any indications that this tornado is on the ground. You're seeing some crazy colors on here. That's likely just noise. We don't have any really clear cut indication uh, of any kind of debris being lofted at this point, which is good. We don't want to see that. Uh, hopefully this is just some broad circulation and we don't see this tighten up. But with these QLCS tornadoes, the, the, the best thing to do is go ahead and warn on a circulation like this and monitor it as it moves eastward, giving folks time uh, to take shelter just in case we do see this tighten up further as we move through the next couple of radar scans. At this point, the, uh, the, the rotation here is pretty broad. We've got some really strong wind north, north of Locust Fork, but uh, in terms of any really tight circulation, not showing up at the moment doesn't mean that this this can't cycle again uh, and everybody in Aniana should still be in that safe place. You are in that polygon until this uh, tornado warning is dropped. You need to treat this like an active tornado on the ground, uh, but I do want to tell you that at this point, this looks like some broad rotation here, uh, something to keep a close eye on, but not an immediate indication that we've got a tornado on the ground. Yes, so again, uh, hopefully this warning will be canceled soon because the rotation is much broader than it was five minutes ago. And again, typically these tornadoes in a long line, they just don't last long, maybe five minutes and they're gone. And that's probably the situation here. We had the exact same thing happen in Southern Walker County. And there could have been, in fact, I saw some damage from a pumpkin center in that polygon in Walker County. So these can easily produce damage and they can be a threat to life. And this is why we ask you to do what we're asking you to do. Go to a safe place and do all the, uh, take your safety precautions here. But again, I don't think it's going to last especially long. But until this polygon goes away, respect the polygon and be sheltered. Uh, broad rotation near easily. There's that uh, easily covered bridge, which is right here. And again, that'll be crossing the hill over into uh, Aniana here shortly. And of course, uh, that being the population center of the county, if there's anything there, we should know about that pretty soon. Real quick, want to go to WEX 05. And again, we're getting more uh, reports coming in from the damage uh, tonight. This is from the community of Stewart in Hale County. Stewart is a little north of Akron along uh, Hale County Road 42. And uh, the damage reports indicate uh, that it's it's pretty rough. Uh, we're getting some uh, information from Megan Scarano, who is down in Hale County. The uh, Hale County EMA estimates that 30 homes have been damaged, three or four destroyed. Some people could be without power for several days in the Oak Village community, and the American Red Cross has been requested. Uh, so again, this is in Hale County in the vicinity of Akron and Stewart. That's near the Warrior River, uh, which is northwest of uh, Greensboro and south of Moundville. And we really won't know the extent of the damage until the, till the first light of day. But Bill Castle and Megan are down there now. And if they get their live shot up, we'll take that and we'll go down there and uh, talk with them. But let's go back to the radar. And again, uh, we're focusing on Blunt County. We have a tornado warning for Blunt County. Again, it's uh, currently 107. And we have broad rotation coming right into downtown Aniana. It's not tight. It honestly doesn't 
look like a tornadic circulation, but there's broad circulation. And forget the tornado threat. The strong winds are going to be a big deal. In fact, uh, let's go to the reflectivity. And again, you can see it's absolutely pouring here. We have the threat of strong straight line winds and flooding rains as well uh, with this line of storms coming through Blunt County. And again, that stretches from Blunt County down to the really downtown Birmingham and then to downtown Tuscaloosa and then down into extreme southern Pickens County. So the storms are coming into Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. And again, for Tuscaloosa, we have no warnings in effect here. The severe thunderstorm warning was allowed to expire. Uh, there is still a severe thunderstorm warning for the Birmingham Metro, parts of Jefferson County and Blunt. And again, there's the tornado warning for Blunt. So let's go back into Blunt County and we'll focus on that. We'll go back to Marengo here shortly, but Blunt County is going to be the focus here until this expires. So it's pouring, just pouring rain now in Aniana, up and down Highway 75, and we'll pop on the velocity, which obviously tells the story, and there's broad uh, rotation there. Uh, not especially uh, tight. It doesn't look like a tornado at this point. Uh, and by the way, some of the storms are producing hail. I've got a lot of hail photographs that have come in here in the last uh, five minutes or so. Uh, so in addition to the strong straight line winds, the chance of an isolated tornado, we've also got some uh, hail that is falling uh, in the storms here as well. And again, this is uh, uh, Etowah County. Gadsden is here. This is Atala. Of course, it's pouring rain over here. But there's been this little kink in the line right here. And earlier, the circulation was much tighter when it was back over toward Locust Fork, crossing over Highway 79. Now it's approaching Anayana and Highway 75 with broad circulation. I want to take the sky cam real quick. Uh, is this Birmingham or Tuscaloosa, uh, Megan? This, uh, this is Birmingham. We should be looking over the skyline, and we can't see it because it's so windy. Yeah, it, it's uh, pouring. We note that the... Birmingham Airport uh, just reported a wind gust of 45 knots, and that's about 50 miles per hour. So we got 50 mile per hour winds with this line of storms in the Birmingham Metro coming through. And again, uh, it is just absolutely ferocious. There is no evidence of a tornado, but listen, if you know you got winds enough to knock down trees, does it really matter if it's a tornado or a straight line? You just need to kind of be away from windows and kind of be sheltered while this thing passes. Let's go back to the uh, radar and uh, let's go. I'll tell you what, let's go to the reflectivity and kind of show the, the Birmingham Metro and Aniana and all this uh, together. Uh, and again, this is part of a, a line segment and you can see the storms run from near Gadsden and Aniana right down into uh, downtown Birmingham. And on the leading edge of this line, we've got winds of 50 miles per hour. And that's probably the case in parts of St. Clair County and parts of Etowah County as well. Uh, and again, I think this tornado warning is going to be canceled here fairly soon. But the most important thing here, I think it's the straight line wind potential and potential for trees down. This is going to knock down a lot of trees. And we're going to have a lot of power outages with this as well, because when the trees come down, the power lines come down. Uh, so again, a line of severe storms now stretching from near Gadsden down to Asheville. Uh, right down through downtown Birmingham and then down to uh, Tuscaloosa. Uh, let's check that Tuscaloosa camera real quick if we can. Want to take a look at this. It'll be the same view as we're seeing from Birmingham. We can't see much because the rain is so heavy, but I wanted to check our DCH camera and that the visibility is better there. That looks like the line maybe has not quite gotten to the uh, hospital. This is at DCH uh, Regional Medical Center in uh, Tuscaloosa. But soon it's going to look just like the Birmingham camera where the visibility drops to near zero. The winds were going to really pick up and they could gust to 50 miles an hour and uh, we could easily see some trees down and some power lines down. So uh, back to the radar. And again, we should also mention there is a flash flood warning in effect now for I-65 from uh, North Birmingham down through the center city, uh, the, the center of the city. And OK, so X marks the spot. That's great. Whenever Taylor does that, tornado warning is gone. So the tornado warning has been canceled for Blunt County. So that means an all clear from the tornado threat. But the weather is horrible. You know that if you're in Aniana, pouring rain, strong straight line winds. And again, that line of storms uh, covers much of St. Clair, much of Etowah County, uh, the northern half of Jefferson County, down toward uh, Tuscaloosa and down into Pickens and parts of Greene counties as well. And uh, look at the lightning count here, 263 strikes in this zone here in the past 10 minutes. So extreme lightning output. Uh, there could be some flooding issues. And again, we got that one flash flood warning in effect here. 
Uh, so just be aware of that. And it's going to be a rude wake up call. A lot of people that are light sleepers, they're going to wake up going, what's going on here? This is why you need that weather radio, uh, because that will sound the alarm uh, as, as you get them and it will wake you up to let you know. Uh, but again, at the moment, we have no tornado warnings for our end of the state. But I do want to go down to Marengo County really quickly because uh, even though they're served by the Montgomery Television Market, a lot of folks uh, watch us on the stream down here. So uh, this is Marengo County. And again, obviously some pretty large hail is falling down here around Half Acre and uh, Sweetwater and uh, Nanafalaya. And this is a tough, tough, tough place to see storms with radar because the radar beam is 10,000 feet off the ground almost. And we have no idea what's going on down at the surface. We can see what's happening at beam height level, but that's way up there. But the general idea is that there's potential here for a tornado. And again, the tornado potential is about to cross US 43 uh, north of Dixon's Mills, and that'll be crossing Alabama Highway 25, which is right here. And again, Thomaston is here. Uh, you've got Dayton down here. Uh, Magnolia is down here. This Alabama Highway 5 uh, and the Highway 25 goes up to Fawnsdale. So we don't want anybody driving on US 43 or Alabama Highway 25 in Marengo County south of US 80. And you can see the polygon. Uh, the, the northern extent would include downtown Linden, the Marengo County Courthouse, which is right here. And the northern extent kind of clips Fawnsdale, which is right up in here. But again, some of the cities involved in this would be Octagon, Thomaston, Dayton, Magnolia, Sweetwater, Half Acre, Nanafalaya, Dixon's Mills. If you live in any of these places in South Marengo County, we want your shelter. This is the only tornado warning in the whole state right now. And again, uh, we're going to focus on this and the storms coming through Birmingham. So let's go back up and show the uh, view up this way, uh, Taylor. Um, all right. So we've got Stephen Quinn, who is in McCullough. Stephen, uh, how bad is it out there? What you got? You know, James, it's really bad. This is not an area where you want to be driving right now if, if you're not trained in how I'm doing this. To give you a sense, it's probably difficult to see from our camera. We are literally at McCalla at the 459 interchange. High beams on, and as you can see, visibility is almost non-existent right now. We are running parallel with this line as it continues to move its way across the Birmingham Metro. And you can see there is also, this water just has nowhere to go right away. So if you're going too fast, hydroplaning, you can see how that could easily happen. This is not something you want to be driving in right now. And we're out here trying to just give you a sense of what it looks like. And, and we are, you know, it, it is difficult to go very fast right now. The wind is excessive, but the amount of rain we're seeing, James, is really significant. And, and tell us one more time exactly where you're located, Stephen. Yeah, I am literally, I, we have just gotten onto 459. We're about to approach exit one in the Bessemer and McCalla area as this line is running kind of diagonally through the Birmingham Metro. This line started giving us this kind of rain, I would say just less than about three minutes ago, James. And as we continue to run with it, it is just sheets of rain coming down and going across the interstate visibility. No more than just a few hundred yards ahead of you right now, uh, going you know well below the speed limit as you're trying to, to navigate the roads out here. Obviously, given the time of day, there's not a lot of people out here, but uh, probably something that uh, you don't want to get yourself caught in. You mentioned the lack of the, you know, the tornado threat right now, but certainly this is a very real threat uh, with the wind and the rain that we're seeing. Yeah, Stephen, thank you. And again, we'll check back with you and be careful. Uh, again, it, it's it's rough out there. I mean, anybody that has experienced this, they'll tell you and it's dropping south. And if you've not dealt with this yet, uh, you'll be dealing with it soon, most likely. This is the uh, Galleria Tower Sky Cam. Taylor looks pretty nasty out there. Yeah, within the last few minutes, we've really started to see that lightning pick up. We're also seeing that rain pick up. Uh, so as you can tell here, visibility is down. The roads are wet. Um, I've got it kind of in black and white mode rather than color mode, just because if I put it into color mode, can't even really see anything. So at least this kind of gives us a better picture of what we're looking at when I put it into this mode here. But as Stephen was saying, it, it's not a good time to be out. If you can completely avoid being out on the roads right now, that is going to be your best bet. Give it some time. These storms are dropping southward, so they will pass your location. 
But remember, uh, we also have now that flash flood warning that includes parts of uh, Jefferson and Shelby counties, and that's where we are anticipating this this band here to kind of exacerbate some of the rain we've already seen and lead to a, a, the possibility of flash flooding uh, for locations as far north as Fultondale stretching down uh, towards Alabaster and that includes the I-65 corridor. So we'll be watching this uh, as you can see here. Uh, that heavier rain now just moving into Hoover. And so that's what we're starting to see pick up on that Galleria Tower camera site. And it looks like we are still tracking the severe thunderstorm warnings up and down the leading edge of this, this line here for the possibility of winds up to 60 miles per hour. We did have a wind gust at the Birmingham International Airport, uh, Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport, up to 52 miles per, miles per hour. Uh, so we'll be watching this carefully. It does look like for Bibb, Chilton, Green, Hale, Shelby, Talladega, Tuscaloosa. The National Weather Service is starting to uh, go with significant weather advisories rather than those uh, severe thunderstorm warnings along the leading edge of this line, which is some good news. It means that maybe these, these storms are just below severe criteria, but if you're underneath one of these thunderstorms, it's loud, it's raining heavily, you're hearing thunder, uh, it is still very gusty. Uh, but we are going to keep watching this as it drops southward for locations north of the line. Your severe threat is coming to an end, so we're going to be able to start clearing counties little by little as this this uh, line keeps sinking southward across central Alabama. Again, uh, watching a lot of the videos and uh, uh, material coming in from our folks that are watching. And again, thanks to everybody. We can't show everything, but we see everything and it really helps us. Your, your uh, video, it's our window to the world. Let's take WEX 05 real quick. Again, everybody's got these doorbell cameras now and watch the lightning uh, in a minute. You're going to see a really, really close lightning hit. Uh, and this was earlier uh, last night. You can see the timestamp up there at uh, 1003. Not quite sure the location here, but the lightning has really been amazing with these uh, thunderstorms. We've, ooh, that's close and notice the power goes out. So again, that's what it looks like. So let's go back to the radar again. Uh, we are now at 119 AM. This is Wednesday, the 30th of November. What's today? The last day of the hurricane season. Oh, there you go. There we, so go. we can celebrate that. So just a, a pretty rough line of storms here from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham to Gadsden, basically along Interstate 59. And uh, again, within this line, we have potential for damaging straight line winds that could we could see winds gusting to 50. We've had that in Birmingham. Uh, we've got potential for hail. We have potential for incredible amounts of lightning. In fact, that's happening. Look at the lightning count up here. 262 in the last 10 minutes right here in this sector, which is pretty remarkable. But here's the good news. Once this passes, the severe weather threat has ended. So let's give an all clear to some places. Now, understand it's still raining in these places, but I'm talking from severe storms. You're done with it in Cullman, Double Springs, Haleyville, Hamilton, Winfield, Jasper, Fayette, Vernon, Sullivan, um, eh, Locust Fork. Uh, any of these places we've called out, you're done with the severe weather. And once this line passes to the south, you're done with it. Uh, but again, we, we got to watch these areas down here in advance of that line because they've not had that much rain with this event so far. And the air has been kind of cool, rain stabilized air up and through here, but down here, uh, that line might actually intensify some more. So if you're in some place like Brent Centerville, uh, Columbiana, Wilsonville, Harpersville, Talladega, Sylacauga, Ashland, Lineville, Clanton, uh, Greensboro. Again, we've got the line of storms coming into Utah where they've had tornado damage. Just be aware that you're going to see this line of storms and it, it means business. Again, you're going to see some really strong winds. Let's go to our sky cam here. Wow, that looks rough, Taylor. Goodness. Yeah. Uh, this is on top of the gallery of tower in Hoover and that's uh, uh, that thing is shaking and baking. Uh, and we still have power. But that's what you're going to deal with when the line comes through your community tonight. Of course, a lot of you have been dealing with this. Uh, but uh, that's uh, pretty rough. And again, at the Birmingham airport, we've had winds, winds gusting to uh, 50 miles an hour tonight. 
Uh, and uh, again, that is to be expected. So uh, I want to break really quickly and I want to go down to uh, Megan Scarano, who is live in Hale County at Akron here we go. Stewart. So Megan, if you can hear me, kind of give us an update of what kind of damage you've got down there. Go. Well, right now, James, we're just getting a line of rain that's just started to come back into here to Akron. We're trying to show you the damage tonight, but we did get caught up in this rain. But I'm looking around me. I'm looking at trees that are just bent in half, and some of them have their roots up on the side that are taller than me, twice my size. I don't know if you can see here tonight, but there's just so many trees in the roadway on the side of the road. Crews really were just able to move out of here just before this rain started. Now, we were able to catch up with the mayor of Akron who tells us that there's about 50 trees down just here in this Oak Village community. Uh, he tells us that there's about three or four homes that are just completely destroyed. Uh, he's asking for if anybody would like to donate tarps for those families because they're going to need tarps to cover their homes. But now we're taking a look at this damage here in the Oak Village community. Uh, we're told that there's a house down there that has some damage. Um, doing our best to stay safe out here tonight. But the Hale County EMA director also told us that there in the county there's about 30 or 40 homes that are that have damage tonight and those three or four completely destroyed are here in Akron. And we're just taking a look at there's rain coming down right now. It started. We were talking about this band that was going to come and catch up with us when we were down in Utah. And here we're seeing that from the damage from this, if you can't hear, it's getting louder and louder as we stand outside. Um, but we are told that the Red American Red Cross has been requested to come into this community tomorrow because there are people who are going to need it. There are donations of water making their way. But really, like you said earlier, we're not going to be able to see the extent of this damage until the sun starts to rise uh, in a couple of hours because there's just so many trees down on the side of the road. I'm going to toss it back to you now as the rain starts to get harder and harder out here as we're seeing another storm, James. Well, Megan, thanks to you and Bill Castle. They're under very, very, very challenging working conditions. And to get that live shot out, that's remarkable. But again, that's coming from the Stewart Havana, uh, I'm sorry, the Stewart Akron communities in Hale County. The same tornado that hit Utah came across the Warrior and hit those communities uh, uh, again la last night. And to our knowledge, we've had no injuries, but there's a lot of damage. And again, some homes have been destroyed in that part of Hale County. So again, here's our uh, tornado watch. And again, notice the watch is being cleared for some counties north of Birmingham. But let's pop that radar back on there. And it's just, uh, this is a bucket of nasty right here. Uh, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, Gadsden. And again, as this line approaches, it's going to get really ugly. Let's take WEX05. I want to show you what it looked like when it came through downtown Birmingham uh, earlier uh, within, the, within the hour. And uh, you can see it's just brutal. And we're very thankful that a lot of folks are not having to deal with this. There's some guy out there in it, but uh, hopefully most folks are in a dry, warm place where you don't have to deal with this. But we've had winds gusting in downtown Birmingham, at least at the airport, to 50 miles an hour. And obviously the buckets and buckets of rain. We have a flash flood warning in effect for parts of Jefferson and Shelby counties because of this. And again, it's 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 tough out there. So again, uh, this uh, line of storms is uh, coming through. Let's kind of take a close look at the Birmingham Metro uh, Taylor and, and kind of show you where we are with this. And again, you can see the leading edge. It's on top of us. We're in River Chase. For those that don't know, we're not on Red Mountain like the other guys. We're in River Chase uh, in Hoover and uh, we can hear it above. And uh, again, it, it's affecting us. We're like right here. The weather should improve in downtown Birmingham in the next 15 minutes or so. The rain rates will decrease a good bit, but uh, these over the mountain communities getting hammered. Uh, Vestavia, Homewood, Mountain Brook, uh, Hoover, uh, back over toward uh, the Oxmoor Valley, uh, Shannon, Bessemer, Midfield, Hueytown, Concord, out toward Oak Grove. I mean, it's just a very, very rough morning. There's no evidence of a tornado here, none whatsoever. There are no tornado warnings for this part of the state, but we have severe thunderstorm warnings covering much of this line. Uh, and again, we could see winds that might gust to 40, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour in spots. There could be some flooding issues, no doubt about that. In fact, let's go live to our sky cam again. This is the one out at Galleria Tower. Uh, conditions actually look a little better. Uh, and that the leading edge of the storms is pushed on down to the south, those really, really high winds. Uh, but again, this is overlooking the intersection of U.S. Uh, 31 and Interstate 459 uh, in Hoover from uh, Galleria Tower. And uh, again, it's uh, uh, not a night to be out. And as I watch uh, all of the 
different reports I'm seeing here. I'm, I am beginning to see some reports of damage, Taylor, coming in from Locust Fork. Uh, and that would be with a tornado warning we had earlier tonight for Blunt County. Uh, in fact, we can take WEX 05 real quick. Uh, these are some images coming in from Locust Fork, and you know, that's a large tree that's been uprooted there. And obviously, we're not going to know the extent of the damage until the first light of day here in about uh, five, six hours from now. Uh, but again, that's what it looks like there. So back to the radar. And if you're just joining us here, we're, we don't have a tornado warning, but we've got this nasty, nasty line of storms coming through. And we wanted just to kind of ride that out uh, with you uh, early this morning. Um, the uh, severe thunderstorm warning for Blunt and Jefferson counties uh, have been, has been canceled. So that's one positive note. That is a good thing. Uh, that is a very good thing. And uh, uh, so we've got one severe thunderstorm warning left on the board. It covers uh, parts of Shelby and then all of St. Clair counties. Okay. Hey, Dennis, let's take WEX 05 real quick and uh, see what uh, see what it looks like here. You can see the lightning at this home. And again, this is a very common scene. It's almost nonstop, just almost nonstop. Uh, in fact, we had a, a strike here earlier tonight. Uh, I want to say it was uh, right at the end of our 10 o'clock news, about 1045. Yeah, 1045. And uh, uh, poor Jeff Spiegel was in the bathroom back there. And I think it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he came out just... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you don't want to be uh, around a bathroom and that stuff is going on here. But again, that's uh, an example of what it is looking like across so much of central Alabama as the line of storms passes through nonstop lightning, fierce winds, enough rain to cause flooding and some hail. Uh, but again, we're thankful we don't see any evidence of a tornado at this point within the line. And like Taylor says, the Weather Service is kind of backing away from these severe thunderstorm warnings. And remember, there is a very strict definition of what makes a storm severe. That's 58 mile per hour winds or one inch diameter hail. And if you don't have that, you don't you shouldn't have a warning in effect. Uh, and I think these storms are probably just underneath that. Again, the winds in Birmingham gusted to 50, just underneath that level. Uh, but I would imagine many, many places are seeing winds to 40, 45, maybe gusting to 50. Uh, some small hail, uh, buckets, buckets of rain, and some flooding. And we're watching for potential for any isolated spin up tornado, and we don't see one right now. Uh, in our part of the state. But again, let's go back down to uh, Marengo County. I want to talk about what's going on down here because uh, we've still, I believe, yes, we still have the tornado warning in effect. So uh, let's take a look at this storm that is coming through South Marengo. Uh, and they are in the Montgomery television market. Uh, but uh, let's go in a little closer so we can see Highway 25 in uh, Thomaston here. Again, Dayton is here, Thomaston here, Magnolia down here. Uh, and again, you can see evidence of a tornado that's about to cross Highway 25. Uh, just below Thomaston. So again, uh, from Highway 43, US 43 West, we'll give you an all clear. The main concern now, it's Highway 25 from near Dayton down to Thomaston and Magnolia. And if you're in Thomaston, you need to be sheltered uh, right now. And if you know anybody that lives in Thomaston, call them. Let them know that they need to be sheltered. Uh, again, this is Alabama 25 here, Alabama Highway 28 right here. Uh, town here is called Consul. This is Thomaston right here. Uh, this is Alabama Highway 66, goes over to Safford. This is Alabama Highway 5. Uh, that is a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of uh, Wilcox County, but uh, potential for a tornado in the southeast part of Marengo County that's uh, going to be passing near or just south of Thomaston, crossing Highway 25. And from there, uh, it could affect parts of Dallas County and maybe the southern part of uh, Perry. This is the boot heel of Perry County. This is Uniontown here. That's US 80. And this is Dallas County here. Uh, this is Orville. Highway 22 goes over to Selma, which is right here. So for those that are watching in Dallas County, just kind of a heads up. This thing is out there by itself. And it is, uh, you know, this thing's hanging in there like the hair in a biscuit. It, it, it's hanging in there. It's been there for a long time. These these QLCS tornadoes have just been very, very short lived where this one has been longer lived because it's not competing with these other storms and uh, it's in a much more favorable environment where the dew points are higher. The instability values are higher down here. So one more time, we'll pop the uh, velocity back on real quick. And again, you can see the potential for the tornado nearing the town of Thomaston. Lovely community in Marengo County. Love Thomaston, Alabama. So let's go back up this way. And again, we'll take a look at that line of storms. 
And you know, the good news, uh, everybody's reporting, uh, you know, high winds and some hail and uh, some flooding type rain here, but I've yet to see any structural damage Taylor, I would assume you haven't either. I have not seen uh, any reports of any kind of structural damage from these. Um, I think, you know, with the National Weather Service not really getting confirmation of, of damage from this line of storms that would signify winds that are above that severe thunderstorm warning criteria, uh, that's why they've kind of decided to let go of some of those severe thunderstorm warnings and with these thunderstorms it's going to be very gusty it is going to be raining very heavily it's going to be loud outside we're going to have a lot of lightning a lot of thunder uh, but so far i'm not seeing any indications uh, that we're seeing those winds over 60 miles per hour or over 58 miles per hour um, from this line as it moves through now we are seeing reports of hail, some quarter size hail at times. Uh, that was, where was this? This was about 30 minutes ago. Um, I got a report of some hail and then uh, Stephen Quinn showing us some more of his driving conditions, which uh, were, it was very hard to see <laughs> as he was driving uh, through some of that heavier rain. So that's why we are uh, urging you not to drive if you don't have to this evening until this line continues to drop southward uh, moving past your location. Uh, but the good news is once this line moves past your location, your severe threat is coming to an end. So far we've seen a couple uh, of co counties dropped from that uh, that watch, which is great news. Lamar, and Fayette and Walker all have been dropped from that tornado watch. I suspect we're going to start to see more counties drop from that watch here pretty soon as well as we're starting to see uh, that that line continue to move south. Once that line completely clears your county, that's when you would be uh, able to be cleared from that watch. Let's go to WEX 05 real quick. Want to show some more uh, images coming in from what it looks like. Uh, this is from uh, Pell City in St. Clair County want to say that might be the hospital over there. Not quite sure, but again, uh, that's uh, what it looks like when this line comes on through. And again, that's uh, from uh, St. Clair County. Uh, very strong winds. Some small hail most likely is falling near there. Uh, here's some more uh, video coming in tonight uh, from uh, various parts of central Alabama and people are just barely wanting to stick their phone out the door because the weather is just so, so rough. Uh, let's see, we'll show some more here. Uh, yeah, look at the lightning here. The lightning is just almost nonstop in some of these videos. It just, it's like a strobe light show uh, that folks are uh, seeing early this morning. And again, uh, it is very loud and very noisy, and a lot of people are up with us. Oftentimes, we're doing this coverage at 1.35 a.m., and folks are not with us, but they certainly uh, are uh, tonight because of the uh, loudness of the thunder and uh, uh, the uh, rain on the roof and everything else. And uh, again, I want to stress that if you're just joining us, uh, we don't have any tornado warnings in our part of the state. Here's a note from Stephen Quinn, by the way. Stephen says he just witnessed multiple power flashes near the I-459-65 interchange in Hoover. And again, that's uh, Stephen's uh, live stream. Uh, and uh, again, that's uh, what folks are dealing with. And uh, looks like Stephen is probably approaching the TV station. I think he's coming back down here toward uh, River Chase. And again, I want to thank all of our people in the field tonight. It, it is, I, I can't tell you how hard it is to get live shots out under these conditions and, and report live. It, it's, it's really easy for me, some stooge in a warm studio, to, to do this. But to, to be out there in the field in the middle of it, it, it is a tough, tough job. And our crew, they have done a great job in the field tonight. Uh, so again, thanks to Stephen and his team, uh, Bill Castle, uh, Megan uh, Scarano. They've done a great job uh, tonight. So again, if you're just joining us, we have one tornado warning in the state for areas far southwest of Birmingham. Got a line of strong storms now from uh, northern Hale County around Moundville up to about Vance, uh, Shelby County around Pelham, then curbing back up here toward Pell City, uh, Logan Martin Lake, that back up toward Gadsden. And once this line passes, you are done with severe weather for tonight. And again, I really think the biggest issue for the next couple of hours, it's not really the tornado threat, it's the chance of flooding, uh, strong straight line winds, some hail. 
Could there be an isolated tornado? Yes, there's a tornado watch until 6 a.m. for areas south of that line. But again, it's just obvious that the big issue, it's going to be from strong straight line winds and the frequent lightning and some hail and flooding problems. And let's just give you some good news. Downtown Birmingham, the risk of severe weather has ended. From downtown Birmingham north, Cullman, Huntsville, uh, you're clear. Holly Pond, not clear, it's still raining there, but you're done with the severe weather threat. Blunt County will give you an all clear. Aniana, Locust Fork, Susan Moore, Bluntsville, you're in good shape there. Walker County, you're done with severe weather. Fayette County, Lamar, Marion, Winston, again, all severe weather risks have ended for these counties. Uh, the concern, again, is along and south of this line of storms coming through the Birmingham Metro. And again, uh, let's kind of look at Shelby County, and you can see the leading edge of this uh, coming into uh, uh, Chelsea, Alabaster, then curving back up to Pell City. And again, that'll be dropping south. That'll be coming down toward Columbiana, Wilsonville, Harpersville, Calera, Montevallo here in the next few minutes. And you'll know when it gets there. You will know when it gets there. And of course, from there, it's going to keep on dropping to the south down toward places like Sylacauga and Clanton, uh, Centerville and Brent, uh, Greensboro. Uh, the uh, rain is still pretty heavy in Tuscaloosa County. But again, we, we really, Megan, are down to what? Uh, warnings for it looks like Calhoun and Talladega. That's the latest warning, right? Yep, that is the latest warning that is going to run through 2.30 a.m. Uh, so we'll be watching that. That's for the possibility of winds over uh, 60 miles per hour. So winds being the main threat with that line as it does move through uh, Calhoun and Talladega counties here. Uh, this is going to last for just a, about 50 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll we'll keep an eye on it at this point. I'm not seeing any reports coming out from at least this part of the line of any damage, but I've been monitoring our social channels. Um, the, the, the good thing to note is that we don't have any uh, tornado warnings in our part of the state. Uh, so it does appear for many locations that severe threat is starting to kind of wind down. One of the concerns we do still continue with into the evening hour, really into the overnight and early tomorrow. I guess we are in tomorrow through the rest of the morning hours. That tells you I'm getting confused about what day it is. Um, we will still have the possibility of some flooding around with this line moving through. It's producing heavy rain. We've got a flash flood warning uh, that does cover parts of the Birmingham Metro. Uh, Homewood, Hoover, Pelham, Alabaster. So all cities right along I-65 that are included uh, in that flash flood warning. That's going to be that blue box there. Uh, so we'll keep watching uh, for any kind of flooding problems with this. But for a lot of folks, it's just a noisy night. It's a noisy night. We are uh, grateful that it, it does appear things are starting to kind of wind down a bit. We're starting to be able to cancel or at least uh, remove some locations from that that tornado watch. And uh, we are going to be able to to, to take more locations out of that tornado watch as the night goes on. We are still keeping a close eye on this one tornado warning to our south, including uh, portions of Marengo County. That's been trimmed down quite a bit. I'm um, not sure. OK, so it does look like National Weather Service is going to let that uh, tornado warning go. So uh, they're going to keep an eye on it. But it, it looks like they are going to, uh, just because they haven't had any reports of damage from this storm that would indicate a tornado on the ground, they're going to kind of just monitor the storm closely, uh, but let that, that tornado warning expire. Now take Quinn shot. This guy's getting chicken here in the middle of the night. I mean, the, the guy's at the <laughs> KFC. I mean, come on, man. Uh, wow. But you, you know what? After a long night in the field, you got sometimes you just need a chicken leg. I mean, I, I'm just saying, hey, let's go to Wexo 5, Dennis. Again, some more of the viewer uh, video coming in from tonight. And again, uh, this is from all across the uh, Birmingham Metro and parts of central Alabama. And what you see there is what you get. Uh, if you look out the window and uh, turn the floodlights on and record, look, look at the vortices there uh, coming off that house. Wow. Uh, these are probably winds of gusting to 40, 45 miles an hour. And we do have a lot of scattered tree damage, trees down, and we've got some power outages, obviously, in a situation like this. Uh, we'll go to some more of the effect. That's the same one we just saw. Uh, again, this is uh, uh, more video, and again, of the uh, 
Again, you see a tree down there. It looks like a tree has come down in that yard and uh, some damage uh, looks like to that uh, home there. It looks like a gutter and uh, some roof damage up there. And uh, this is what's going on here. This has been a rough night. Uh, uh, and again, for those with damage, we just hate to see that. But again, you know, the damage stuff we can uh, we can clean up. It's uh, the loss of life we're trying to mitigate here. And we've had no loss of life tonight and this morning, which is a good thing. Uh, looks like there's some flooding. And again, uh, uh, many spots have picked up over two inches of rain uh, since it all started uh, at some point yesterday afternoon. Uh, and the ground is saturated and uh, we really needed a rain event like this, but maybe not all at once like this. I drove by uh, Lake Purdy uh, this morning and it looked pretty low, so this is going to do a pretty good job of filling up uh, Lake Purdy, uh, that's for sure. Uh, and again, uh, real quick, some of the damage. This is coming in from where Megan Scarano is uh, down in uh, uh, Akron and Stewart down in uh, Hale County from a tornado earlier tonight. So back to the radar and again uh, the tornado warning the weather service is going to let this thing go and by letting it go they mean they're not going to extend it. So if you are in the boot heel of uh, Perry County or in western Dallas County or north Wilcox County uh, you could see some hail and strong straight line winds but the weather service is going to let the warning expire. They're going to cancel this once it gets out of Marengo County but we can give an all clear to almost all of Marengo County along and west of Highway 25. Uh, Dayton down to Thomaston and Magnolia. You're good. Now the line of storms is coming. You're not done with a chance of severe weather, but from this one storm, uh, you're good. So let's expand this out and show a big view and kind of do a reset here at 143. Uh, we have a line of uh, strong to severe storms stretching from again near Akron. This is where they had the tornado damage. In fact, you saw Megan's live shot. It, the weather was just horrible uh, there from near Akron up to uh, near Moundville around Vance and to Shelby County around Alabaster, then curving over uh, Lake Logan Martin, uh, then to near Lincoln, and then kind of curving back up toward Alexandria and Glencoe. Uh, that's that long line of storms, and we do have severe thunderstorm warnings. In effect, let's look at East Alabama. There's a little Boeing segment here, and the air is more stable over here on the eastern side of the state, but still the dynamic forcing is producing these strong straight line winds. And again, right in through here, we could see some fairly strong winds. Uh, Jacksonville is here. This is Anniston. Uh, that line of storms is kind of sitting around Webster's Chapel. that will be coming into the uh, Pleasant Valley, the Angel community right here, and then into uh, Jacksonville and Weaver and Sachs, McClellan, uh, Linlock, and then Anniston, Oxford, Bynum, East Aboga. Uh, and again, it's going to be a rough ride when this stuff comes through. The, the wind will be screaming. Uh, the rain will be torrential. You might have some small hail. Uh, but the good news, we don't have any sign of a tornado at this point. Uh, and again, we have no tornado warnings. But again, that is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for a pretty good chunk of Calhoun County and the northern part of Talladega County for that line that's coming on through here. Uh, but again, no sign of any tornado. So let's go back to the uh, big picture one more time. Uh, Dennis, did Quinn move from the chicken place? Uh, looks like he's got a different shot there. I think he didn't want us to know that he was getting chicken here in the middle of the night. I got no problem. That sounds good to me. I mean, I, 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 I yeah, he's getting a slurpee. I, I would celebrate the, going to KFC in the middle of the night. Uh, yep. So we'll, we'll find out what he got later. I know, I know for a fact that he got some Hunt Brothers pizza at a gas station uh, last night. And for those that know me well, I love to eat at gas stations. I mean, I am a gas station food connoisseur. All right. And nothing, nothing beats a Hunt Brothers pizza after chasing severe weather on a wet, nasty night like tonight. Uh, so uh, again, uh, we're watching the line. The tornado warning has been canceled and we're going to gradually phase back to regular programming about two o'clock. We're going to stay here for about 50, uh, 14, 15 more minutes, but we have not had a tornado warning in a while. And the weather service is gradually letting these severe thunderstorm warnings go. And the trend is for slow weakening here. But they're still packing a punch. Don't get me wrong. And again, if you're in advance of this, Centerville, Brent, Calera, Sylacauga, Talladega, Sycamore, Anniston, Oxford, Jacksonville, uh, Spring Garden, Heflin, Ashland, Lineville, Rockford, Clanton, Centerville Brent, you're, you're going to have to deal with this. And it's, uh, you know, yeah, a lot of folks in these places are sound asleep right now. But boy, when this thing hits, they're going to wake up. They will pop up really quick. Uh, so uh, just be aware of that. And again, we're going to be watching for any evidence of rotation. 
We do not see that right now, Taylor. We, when's the last tornado warning we had here? I guess it was what, for Blunt County? Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, uh, again, uh, we do not have any active tornado warnings at this point. And um, watching some mm. more of the images coming in here. And again, your, your videos, your images, it's basically uh, my window to the world, uh, which is great. Let's see, want to show it. Check this out. I love this. So this is, this is, this is what you need in your safe place, okay? Uh, so what do we got here, Taylor? Helmet. See some bottled water. I, li I like those cookies down there. That, that, that works for me. Got your blankets. Got some uh, hard sole shoes. I mean, uh, what else could you ask for? So there you go. And we love it when people are ready. So let's go back to the radar. What you got over there? You're looking at some rotation, I see. Yeah, I'm just keeping a close eye on this rotation here. Uh, this is moving through eastern Etowah County. The last couple of scans... It looks like we might have had a little bit of rotation trying to uh, form here just to the east of Hoax Bluff. So I was going to send a note uh, to the National Weather Service and just, you know, see if they're keeping an eye on that, which they are. They're keeping an eye on everything, but that just kind of looked a little suspicious to me. So I was just kind of doing a little radar analysis on this. But as, you know, as usual with this type of weather setup, you can maybe have a little bit of rotation show up in one or two radar scans and then it's gone the next couple of radar scans. It's like playing a whack-a-mole here with uh, these different quick little rotations. So I've been keeping a close eye on it so far. It's hard to see if there's any kind of uh, lowering CC. We've got a lot of noise going on with this, but that was one little area that I was just focused on a little bit, but it does appear that at least for the moment, uh, that's improving. So I'm just constantly looking up and down the line, checking in for any kind of indication that we might see any kind of spin up. Uh, but most of the air in eastern Alabama is more stable than the air that we had those uh, tornado warnings in earlier. So when we were talking tornado warnings earlier, we were generally talking about uh, our western and southwestern most communities. That's where we had uh, some of those longer lived tornado warnings. Uh, so for this, this is a different type of setup here. We've got this line moving through. The air is not as stable, is not as unstable. It's more stable. And so we're going to be watching up and down this line uh, for any kind of indication of rotation. Uh, at this point, let's check again, see how the radar is trending for that little area. A little noisy there, but no, no really strong indication that we've got anything of concern going on at this point from that system. So uh, we have one warning here left on the board. It includes parts of Calhoun, parts of Talladega counties. It is for uh, strong winds, 60 miles per hour. So we're going to keep watching that line as it keeps moving eastward. And it's starting to approach the uh, edge of that severe thunderstorm warning box. So we'll see whether or not the National Weather Service decides to extend the severe thunderstorm warning or not. This one is projected to last through uh, 2.30 a.m. And then other than that, across central Alabama, we don't have any tornado warnings. We don't have uh, any additional severe thunderstorm warnings besides that one we just talked about. Uh, we do have a flash flood warning that does include uh, Birmingham down to Alabaster. So that's going to be parts of Jefferson and parts of Shelby counties. That includes I-65. Uh, we did just have a severe thunderstorm warning that was expired for Shelby and St. Clair counties. So trends continue to be good. We're starting to see more and more of these warnings dropped across central Alabama. Uh, we should mention, Taylor, we've got uh, one note from our friends of the Hale County Board of Education. Uh, they are going to delay schools there for two hours uh, tomorrow. Uh, and again, uh, this is because of uh, uh, damage and road debris. So again, Hale County, all Hale County schools and offices will have a two hour delayed opening today uh, because of uh, so many uh, roads have trees on them and there's been some damage. And uh, again, uh, that's a note from Hale County and their Board of Education. So I wanted to pass that on. Uh, and let's see, let's go back to WEX 05 real quick. More uh, viewer video coming in. And uh, uh oh, 
Tell you what, let's go back to me on radar. I'll fix that. Uh, we're all a little tired here in the office this morning. I'm not tired. I'm just getting my second wind. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, I've not slept since 1973, so staying up all night does not bother me. Uh, uh, typically, I sleep about three hours a night during the week, which is not healthy. I don't recommend that, but your body kind of get used to it. When I was in high school, I would work before school and after school, and you just kind of get used to it. Now, let's, uh, let's go back. Uh, Hale County. Hale County is delayed for two hours. Let's go back to Wexo 5 real quick, and this should be able to... Uh, show that and apparently we can't but that's okay now let's go back to the radar we'll figure that out here in just a second so again if you're just joining us uh, it's 1 52 a.m this is wednesday november 30th and uh let's give an all clear city of tuscaloosa all clear your risk of severe weather done birmingham all clear risk of severe weather done now it's still raining don't get me wrong we've got rain falling but in terms of severe weather and tornadoes you're done with a severe weather threat uh, Gadsden, you're done. The risk of severe weather is ended, okay? Uh, Blunt County, Cullman County, Walker, Fayette, Winston, Marion, Lamar, Pickens, you're done with severe weather. Uh, the concern is for areas along and south of this line. Uh, and again, the line is coming through uh, right now Weiss Lake, Center Leesburg, uh, down to about Spring Garden, Jacksonville, Weaver, Anniston, Oxford, Talladega. Seaburg, Childersburg, and then curving down toward Calera, and then Centerville and Brent. And on the leading edge of this, uh, if you're asleep, it'll wake you up. I mean, it will wake you up. You'll hear it. Uh, the rain on the roof, the uh, winds outside, uh, the uh, loud thunder. But the encouraging news, we've seen no evidence of a tornado. And the chance of one is really decreasing. Understand there could be an isolated tornado. There could be another tornado warning. But I think the odds are slowly decreasing in that we've not seen any activity here in the last uh, hour or so. The last tornado warning we had was for Blunt County. We've had some damage at Locust Fork. We know that. But that tornado dissipated. And again, it's a QLCS tornado, quasi-linear convective system. We used to call them squall lines. Some pinhead somewhere decided they're going to be a QLCS, which is fine, but they're really hard to deal with. We're not that good with them. They, they last for a few minutes and they're gone. You issue a warning. By the time the warning goes out, they're gone. They're very hard to deal with, and we've had a couple of QLCS tornadoes tonight, one in Walker County. We've had damage in Southern Walker from one and damage up in Locust Fork from one, these little small spin-up tornadoes. And there could be another one tonight, uh, this morning, but I'd say the odds of that are decreasing. Uh, but again, just uh, the next communities in line here, uh, places like Heflin, Ashland, Lineville, Sylacauga, Calera, Jemison, Thorsby, Centerville, Brent, Clanton, Rockford, Greensboro. And if you're in any of these places, we're calling out the storms are going to be approaching you. So let's go down to our storm that came out of Marengo County real quick. The Weather Service in Birmingham has opted to uh, uh, let, let it go, as they say. Uh, and uh, that storm is moving through the western part of Dallas County, approaching Selma. And earlier, again, we've had a tornado warning for the southern part of Marengo County for this storm, but there's no evidence of a tornado at this point. There's no warning, not even a severe thunderstorm warning at this point. So, But again, that's going to come through Selma, and that will rock and roll a good bit with uh, loud thunder, heavy rain, possibly some small hail, but the, the trends are certainly good here. So let's go to our watch warning map and take a look at the tornado watch for the counties that are still in it. The watch extends until six o'clock this morning, but again, most of these counties will be cleared long before six o'clock. Uh, so technically, the counties in green, they've been cleared from the tornado watch, but I can tell you for Jefferson, Tuscaloosa, Pickens, your risk of severe weather is ended. Sure, it's still raining. But the risk of severe weather is ended, so this, this, and this will be off the board soon. And all these other ones will be cleared out as the line drops on down to the south. And again, uh, I don't expect anybody to be under a tornado watch by 6 o'clock this morning. That was kind of a long time they set for this thing. Maybe extreme South Alabama, but again, for most places, the watch will be canceled well before uh, 6 o'clock this morning. But there's a look at our, that's a, look at that skinny little polygon. That might be the skinniest polygon I've ever seen. <laughs> Zoom in on that thing. I mean, look at this. I mean, wow. I mean, that thing is uh, tiny. How do you wind up with that? I mean, th this is about as, as small of a sliver as St. Clair County as you can get. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to trim it based on the position of that line. So you've got the uh, back edge of the polygon butting up against the, the jagged line, which is the Coosa River right here. 
So a little bitty skinny polygon for parts of Shelby and St. Clair County. And then the other polygon is over here for parts of... Uh, I think that one, for some reason, it's still showing up in our system, but that they did expire that yeah, severe thunderstorm warning. It, ex, exit out. It's out of here. <laughs> uh, and we do know we now have a new warning for Cleburne and Northern Clay and Northern Randolph. Uh, so we have a new severe thunderstorm warning in effect. Again, this would include Heflin, Edwardsville. You know what's in Edwardsville? The best gas station food ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I was driving to Fruithurst. Fruithurst is, uh, is over there. And I came across that sign. I almost ran off the road. I got so excited. Uh, best gas station food ever. Uh, but again, uh, Edwardsville, Fruithurst, Heflin. Uh, this runs down to near Ashland and Lineville and down to about Woodland and Wadawi. I was at uh, Woodland not that long ago, saw the kids in the school there. In fact, that was over at Roopville, Georgia. Uh, saw the kids in the school over there. So, uh, ooh, got a new tornado warning for Dallas County. All right, so uh, uh, let's take a look at that. Again, that, that, that storm is in a favorable environment down here where the air is unstable. And like we've talked about, it's not competing with other storms for inflow here. And yeah, that looks pretty bad. So the storm that came out of Marengo County has ramped up again. And this is a tornado warning in effect for Dallas County. Selma is in the polygon. All right, this is uh, Alabama Highway 41 that runs south out of, out of Selma. And again, uh, there could be a uh, debris signature beginning to show up here. This is Highway 22 that runs out of Selma down toward Orville. And uh, this is where Highway 22 intersects with Alabama Highway 5. This is a town called Safford. And uh, again, uh, that's a pretty good looking tornado signature here. So again, what we're going to ask you to do is this. If you know anybody that's in this polygon, you might want to call them. And again, if they get mad at you, just tell them to get mad at me. But people are mad at me all the time, and that's fine. But we want them to know that there's a tornado warning here. That's a pretty nasty looking tornado signature here. And again, uh, this uh, is kind of riding along and south of Highway 22. It's going to be awfully close to uh, Orville, which is right here. And uh, it could be fairly close to Selma, probably passing a little south of Selma, cutting across uh, Alabama 41. There's a community down here called Sardis. I spoke at the Sardis Baptist Church down here uh, about probably about 25 or 30 years ago. But a wonderful community and great people. And of course, if this stays intact, it could affect Montgomery County, uh, maybe northern Lowndes and then Montgomery County. So uh, our friends in Montgomery, uh, Josh Johnson and those folks down there, they'll be taking care of our friends in this area. But again, a lot of people down here, especially the weather dweebs, they tune around to these different weather live streams and you might uh, have discovered us. So if you live in uh, Dallas County, we want you to be in a safe place. Uh, that's an interesting community right here in Cahaba. That used to be the state capital of Alabama. A lot of people have no idea, but that at one point was the state capital. And if you cut off Highway 22 and go down here to the old Cahaba town, it's really a ghost town. And uh, you can see some of the ruins of what used to be the state capital. But this is where the Cahaba River dumps into the Alabama River. And it was always flooding, and it just wasn't viable. And they moved it out of there pretty quickly. But that's a fascinating bit of Alabama state history right here. And Taylor, that was a boring personal story. Sometimes I go into boring personal stories here that in the middle of the night. We all learned something new today. Uh, so there you go. Uh, but it's again, it's 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 got this Spanish moss. It's just a fascinating place. If you ever want to get some Alabama history, you might want to go down there and check it out sometime. But that's a pretty good looking tornado signature, uh, Taylor. It, that looks pretty rough. It does, and it's continuing to either maintain its strength or in some indications, it's looking like we could see that that rotation tightening up a little bit. This is, of course, it's pretty easy to tell on this map. This is that area that we're we're watching carefully and I'm going to check the correlation coefficient. I haven't done that in a while. It's kind of noisy. It's hard to tell uh, whether or not we are looking at a tornado debris signature here or just some noise. Uh, so I'm, I'm not confident enough in this to call this a TDS. But what I am confident in is that there is some rotation showing up with this storm. Uh, so it is reasonable for the National Weather Service to uh, continue this tornado warning. This warning is going to last through 2.45 a.m. And uh, it's, it's headed in the general direction of Orville. It's going to be passing very close to Orville. Uh, we're also looking at uh, Cahaba. 
Eventually, the center of circulation is going to be passing very close to or just south of Selma and also Brantley. So we'll continue to watch this system here. I'll keep checking back on the uh, correlation coefficient. Hard to know whether or not uh, that is a uh, debris signature showing up on this system or not. You can see that the uh, the velocity kind of lines up with that little notch that we're starting to see form here. Uh, that little hook that's trying to develop in this storm here. And this has been a storm that's really just maintained its strength. It was warned way back all the way into Mississippi. So we've been tracking this same cell moving f across uh, Alabama for quite some time. So it's had on and off warnings with it. Uh, over its lifetime, stretching all the way back into Mississippi. And as James told you, uh, has been telling you, this is in an environment where it's very different than some of the storms that we're seeing up in our part of the state. The air is much more unstable uh, to our south, and there hasn't been a lot of rain to help stabilize things. So this storm has more energy to work with and more energy to maintain its strength uh, over, over the next few minutes. Hopefully it won't, uh, but we'll keep a close eye on it. Let's check that velocity, see if we're getting any kind of uh, indication that there's a weakening and really it's maintaining. Uh, this doesn't look to be stronger, but it certainly doesn't look to be weaker either. So this looks like a, a, a storm that is uh, maintaining its strength. Now it's starting to look like this could be a tornado debris signature. We're seeing a uh, a little bit better indication of some of the lowering of the CC just to the southwest of Orville, which would mean uh, some loft debris uh, possible with this storm. So we'll keep watching this. Looks like this latest CN coming in, and we, we do still see the indication that this could be some debris that is uh, uh, still being lofted from this. We're looking pretty far away from the radar site, though, as we look at this storm. So sometimes that can make it difficult uh, to have a really clear picture of what's going on at the surface. Here, now let's go to uh, Wexo Five real quick, Dennis. So uh, you know this other story, Taylor. We've had this big uh, environmental landfill fire in Moody, uh, really for the past couple of days. And I, this morning, I got all these notes from people in uh, parts of the Birmingham metro saying, "I smell smoke." And apparently this is where that thing, the, the smoke has been coming from, and it is still going. That, that's new pictures uh, with the rain, which is amazing. The fact oh, that wow. that fire is still going with the conditions we have. Uh, so, again, that's in uh, near Moody in St. Clair County. Uh, so, again, uh, we'll look at some more of the uh, video coming in here. This looks like it's some security cam video. I want to say this was from... Uh, I think this is up in uh, Cherokee County. We've seen some pretty remarkable lightning strikes on some of these uh, uh, cameras... Uh, tonight, the lightning has been very prolific with these uh, thunderstorms. Uh, you know, I like it when uh, dogs like to watch us. I mean, we're, we're big with the canine uh, demographic. Uh, so thanks to all the uh, dogs and cats for uh, watching us. And again, this is some more of the uh, video that's being sent in from folks. And this is what it's like in that line of storms. Uh, fierce, fierce wind, uh, some hail. And again, we've had scattered wind damage, tree and power line damage in spots. And we've had some uh, tornado damage tonight. Again, Utah, Akron, Stewart, and Green and Hale counties with uh, tornado damage. Uh, earlier tonight, we've had uh, reports of some tornado damage, potential tornado damage around Locust Fork and Blunt County, also around Pumpkin Center and Walker County. And uh, let me just kind of explain how these QLCS tornadoes work. Uh, you know, people in Locust Fork said, I didn't get much of a warning. Well, you're not. You are not going to get much of a warning with a squall line tornado. Uh, these things just don't last long. We'll go back to the uh, uh, radar behind me. Uh, if you get a warning at all, you're very fortunate. There's just not much of a way we can manage it because the, the tornadoes often last for a couple of minutes and they're gone. You see it on radar, the warning goes out, this tornado's already gone. They stay down for two, three, four, five minutes and that's it. We're just not able to warn people. So again, if you, are, if you had some damage tonight and the warning seem like it came a little late. That's just the way it works with these nighttime squall line QLCS tornadoes. I've been to conference after conference after conference, weather conferences. People talk about these things. There's papers, there's research, but nobody's really found a solution yet. 
Uh, and I think we're not going to have a solution for the next couple of generations. And it's just the way it is. And we have a lot of these here. You know, you look back on a day like April 27, 2011, that was easy. A third grader could issue those warnings. The incredible radar signatures, the video, the live video of these tornadoes, the debris balls, the, everything was so easy that sometimes the lead time was 40, 45 minutes on those horrible, horrible tornadoes. But on a night like this, this is when it's hard. Uh, no, the, the, the third grader is not going to be able to warn for these, and sometimes we can't warn for these. That's the tough part of this science. It's the late night, middle of the night, squall line, short-lived tornadoes in a squall line like this. So, again, if you got a warning at all, uh, that's pretty uh, good. So our line of storms keeps on dropping to the south, and again, uh, the severe weather risk is ended for Tuscaloosa, for Birmingham, for Pell City, for Asheville, for Anniston, for Gadsden. Severe weather risk has ended. Go to bed. Take a nap. Uh, the line is uh, now approaching Heflin, and again, we remind you that we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect now for uh, parts of Cleburne, Northern Clay, Northern Randolph counties. Uh, as the line of storms comes through here, it could produce strong straight line winds. Uh, the storms approaching Sylacauga, coming down through Calera, Centerville, Brent, back down toward Greensboro. Heavy rain, gusty winds. Let's go back down to Dallas County, and again, this is the uh, obviously the greatest concern statewide. And again, this is in the Montgomery television market, but a lot of people watch us when we're live like this. And uh, so again, we've got the rotation, which you can see is just south of Alabama Highway 22 right here. It's a little broad. It's not as tight as it was about five, 10 minutes ago. Uh, but that circulation is going to stay just south of Highway 22, uh, crossing the Alabama River, which is right here. And then uh, coming up on, on Selma, uh, which is right here. And this is Alabama Highway 41 that goes down to Camden. So, uh, again, if you're in Selma or Sardis or any of these communities, just be aware that uh, uh, this could be a tornado that's down. You saw that uh, lowered correlation coefficient product, which is right here, which is a sign that there could be some debris being lofted. Uh, this is US 80, by the way, that runs from Selma back over to Montgomery. And uh, this is the county line. Again, this is Dallas County here. And uh, it doesn't include all of Dallas County. Uh, for example, Valley Grand up here, you're not in the polygon. Uh, but, uh, and again, US 80 is right here, going back over toward Browns. Browns is right here. Uh, but just be aware, if you're in Selma, Sardis, anywhere on Highway 41, uh, we could have a tornado down. This is in Dallas County, west of Montgomery. And uh, the tornado warning for Dallas County extends until 245 245 it's 2:09 uh, right now and uh, so in terms of the war the weather service has canceled the warning for Calhoun and Talladega the severe thunderstorm warning so it looks like the only severe thunderstorm warning we have in our part of the state it's the one for clay parts of clay Cleburne and Randolph until 245 this one right here and that's it there are no warnings in effect for Talladega or Shelby or Bibb. And again, it is, it's loud and it's pouring and it's windy, but the storms are not hitting severe criteria. 58 mile per hour winds or one inch hail. They're underneath those limits. And again, so the Weather Service is not uh, issuing warnings. They're issuing these advisories for the storms. But the one warning in effect, it's for much of Cleburne, Northern Clay, Northern Randolph for the line segment that is right here. And this line will continue sagging down to the south over the next uh, few hours here. So uh, the, the plan here will probably stay up until about 2.30. And uh, if we don't get any new tornado warnings, uh, we'll go back to regular programming about uh, 2.30, uh, I think World News Now, and we'll do updates every 30 minutes like we were doing back in uh, prime time. Uh, so here's our current watch warning map. And again, you can see, like we talked about, Pickens, Tuscaloosa, Jefferson, risk of severe weather has ended there. Uh, the county's in green, by the way. That's a flash flood watch. Uh, for this morning, but again, the rain will be ending from north to south over the next several hours, and the sky should be mostly sunny for most of you later today, but breezy and much cooler. Uh, but in terms of the warnings, a uh, flash flood warning for the Birmingham Metro I-65, severe thunderstorm warning for Cleburne, northern Clay, northern Randolph, a tornado warning for parts of Dallas County, central Dallas County, including the city of Selma. 
Uh, other than that, we have no warnings. The, the green polygons, these are flood advisories in effect. As, uh, we've obviously got potential for some flooding issues in parts of Shelby, Tuscaloosa, Bibb, Green Hail Sumter in uh, Pickens counties, and a small one up here in southern Coleman County, and an older one back in Fayette and Lamar, but the heavier rains have uh, greatly tapered off there. Uh, so back to the radar. And again, uh, we're watching that line dropping on down to the south. And uh, got a lot of images coming in from people all over this part of the state. It's a lot think half the state's awake with us right now, Taylor. I mean, we got we, this is like a party here. Uh, it's uh, it's Wednesday morning at 2:12. And again, we encourage everybody, you don't need to be afraid of the weather tonight. Just stay with us. And if there's anything you need to do, we'll tell you when you, what you need to do and when you need to do it. Uh, seeing more reports of some flooding coming in uh, as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting some great shots here. We got a lot of pet shots. Uh, the dogs and cats just love us. I mean, I don't know what it is. Are you a dog or a cat person, Taylor? Uh, uh, I like both. Okay. I'm not partial. I have cats, though. How right about that? How about this? Here's a toddler that likes to watch us. Uh, take Wexo 5 real quick if you can. Yeah. Toddlers like to watch. How about that? So, again, uh, more images coming in. Boy, look at this. Boy. <laughs> Looks like a car wash. Golly. I mean, that's just uh, brutal. Uh, I, I think somebody that's working the overnight shift, they said that they went out to, kind of like on their lunch break. For people that work weird hours, you don't understand our lunch breaks are different. <laughs> But this is their lunch break, and uh, I mean, that looks like you're in the middle of a hurricane. Yeah. I mean, that, that looks like you're in the middle of a landfalling hurricane right there. Uh, and that's what folks are uh, dealing with uh, this morning. Wow. That's, uh, that's tough stuff. And I have been in landfalling hurricanes, and that's what it looks like. Uh, here's some more uh, video of what it looks like uh, across the state early this morning. And uh, again, uh, a lot of wind, a lot of rain. Uh, but the good news, we have no tornado problems for our part of the state as we speak. Here at 214, the uh, tornado warning is in effect for Dallas County down to the south in the Montgomery television market. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the dog, Taylor. What do you think? Oh, um, yeah. That looks like our old dog. We used to have dogs and cats. My wife kind of developed allergies. Uh, and uh, we, we can't have them now, but we had a dog that looked just like that, called the dog Tigger. We picked it up in the parking lot of a supermarket, just an old stray, and that was one of the greatest dogs uh, ever. But uh, dogs love to watch us, and we appreciate that. Again, there's some of the views of this fire out in uh, Moody uh, tonight, and uh, that thing is just still burning. More video from uh, folks that are watching the weather, and it's, it's tough. I mean, uh, it's kind of hard to sleep through this. I don't know, some people are... I guess heavy sleepers, and they might sleep through it. But uh, uh, again, that looks like Hurricane uh, Frederick coming in in 1979, <laughs> or Hurricane Camille in 1969, or Ivan in 2004. Uh, that's uh, pretty remarkable. That's a pretty cool shot for the, an aircraft coming in for a landing, commercial jet in Birmingham tonight. Somebody caught a nice lightning shot uh, from that. Uh, and again, now we've had some flooding problems. Uh, many spots have picked up over two inches of rain. And again, there has been some damage. And again, you can see in this home, you can see uh, uh, damage. And the tree is down, and I think a tree hit the front part of this house. And what's going to happen, the Weather Service will be sending survey teams in to review the damage tomorrow to determine what was straight line wind, what was a tornado. But the best news of all, we don't have any reports of any fatalities across the state tonight. And that, that's the uh, absolute best news. Hey, wa watch the rain pattern. Watch these vortices around his house here in a minute. This is pretty wild, okay? A uh, little eddies in the wind. Um, there they go. See that, see that spinner going there? Whoa. That's, uh, that is a study in fluid dynamics right there coming off, that, uh, coming off that house. But if you are in a dry place and you've had no damage, then you are blessed early this morning. So back to the radar. And uh, again, uh, we've been on TV for a long time. We typically don't do this unless we have tornado warnings. And so a lot of people are watching and oh, do we have tornado warnings? No, we don't. We just thought we'd ride this line with you this morning. Uh, and I, I think we have World News Now that's on uh, right now, and we're going to get back to that in about 15 minutes. 
Uh, but the warnings are really fading fast, which is good for our part of the state. And while the line is still producing very heavy rain, strong winds, some hail, they're under severe limits except for this little segment right here, Cleburne, Northern Clay, and Northern Randolph counties. That is the only severe thunderstorm warning in effect uh, in our part of the state. The tornado warning, again, is down to the south for uh, Dallas County. And just be aware, uh, if that thing continues, it could wind up affecting the Montgomery Metro. Uh, maybe Montgomery, maybe Prattville, Wetumpka, uh, someplace like that. In fact, let's go look at that thing one more time. Again, a lot of people are watching in Dallas County, and if you are, we're glad you are. So uh, let's look at the velocity. That's our reflectivity. And again, you know, that thing is right over the old, we talk about the old state capital, the ghost town. It's right over that old Cahaba right now, uh, this rotation. And it sure looks like it's going to stay south of Selma, uh, cutting across US, or Alabama Highway 41, then cutting across U.S. Highway 80 here in the next 15 minutes or so. So, uh, again, uh, if you know anybody down here south of Selma, uh, they just need to be sheltered until this thing passes. Um, we can give an all clear for Orville and points west uh, back over towards Safford. Uh, the risk of uh, the tornado with this storm is ended. But again, uh, just looking at this, this is a Togaville right here. This is US 82 right here. This is Booth, which is northwest of Prattville. Uh, and again, uh, this thing might be coming in the direction of, uh, of the state capital of Montgomery. Uh, this is Lowndes County right here. This is northern Lowndes County. And again, uh, the Gump is right here. So, possible tornado, and it might be north of Montgomery. Prattville is here, but if you're in Prattville, Wetumpka, Coosada, Millbrook, uh, Otagaville, just keep an eye on this thing. Uh, we, I, I don't like these middle of the night tornadoes, uh, the ones that we can see like this. And, you know, those little spinners we've had in, in, in Blunt in Walker counties. Those are so hard to deal with. These are a lot easier to deal with. It's out there by itself. They tend to last longer, and the warnings can be effective here. And the best possible thing is the fact that this thing just fizzles out and dissipates. But we don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, this is the Alabama River right here uh, that separates Atauga County from Lowndes County. And again, uh, Montgomery is right here, Prattville. Interstate 65, U.S. 31, U.S. 82 right here going up toward Billingsley. Autogaville, that's Alabama Highway 14 right here going over towards Selma. So uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that. And again, the Montgomery stations are wall to wall and they're going to take care of you with that. But we'll keep an eye on that. So let's go back up this way. And uh, Taylor, so far so good. No damage in the last 30 minutes, right? Uh... We're seeing some reports of possible trees down in uh, St. Clair County as this line passed through. Of course, uh, that line was warned for severe thunderstorm warning uh, as as that line moved through. So we will uh, keep an eye out for any kind of photo or video evidence of uh, some of those trees that could be down in St. Clair County from that leading edge that moved through. Uh, but as of recent, you know, the, the one severe thunderstorm warning that we do have left on the board here. I haven't seen any reports coming out of that warned area. Uh, as we've been talking about really at this point, the main the main impacts from the system are coming from strong winds. We've also got some heavy rain um, with this as it's moving through, but it, it doesn't look to be strengthening. Uh, it's going to keep dropping southward, and at this point, it's been uh, holding just below severe criteria, which is good. Uh, and we're, we're able to start to clear more counties from that tornado watch. Let's take a quick look at that tornado watch. Um, as we take a look across central Alabama, uh, you see the green. That is a flash flood watch, and that does include really the northern, uh, about the northern half of Alabama. But the uh, yellow counties, that's where we have a tornado watch. And that did at one point extend across pretty much all of West Alabama. And as you can see, many counties in West Alabama have been dropped from that tornado watch. So we have been able to clear 
uh, Lamar, Fayette, Walker, Jefferson, Pickens, and Tuscaloosa counties from that tornado watch. It does still cover uh, in our area, Shelby County, uh, Bibb County, Chilton County, Green and Hale counties. Uh, so we will be continuing to monitor this as that line moves southward. But at this point, the radar trends have been good. We haven't had a warning in a while for our part of the state. The one storm that we're keeping that close eye on is the storm that is just south of Selma uh, moving through Dallas County. And uh, it's in that, that, that environment where it, it could continue to sustain itself. Let's take a look at the velocity here. And there's some rotation with it. Not super, super tight rotation. Anything that uh, shows strengthening at the moment. But understandable why the National Weather Service is continuing this tornado warning. Uh, as we move forward and we are looking fairly high up into this storm too, which makes it a little bit more difficult because uh, we are fairly far away from that radar beam at this site here. Uh, but what appears to be a long lived storm uh, that has had histories of tornado warnings all the way back into Mississippi uh, is still going to be moving on this eastward track. The motion is east at 50 miles per hour, so we'll see. This has been holding together throughout its lifespan. I'm say hours. We've been tracking this same cell, so we'll have to watch it because it is going to be moving in the general direction of uh, Prattville, Montgomery, eventually possibly close to Wetumpka. So we'll be watching this storm. Uh, this is in the Montgomery television market. I will Give you another quick look at what we've got going on across central Alabama and these storms are uh, starting to move southward pretty quickly. Uh, we are almost ready to remove Shelby County from that severe threat. You still have some heavy rain across the southern half of the county, so we'll keep watching that. But pretty soon you're going to be one of the next counties uh, that will be dropped from that severe threat. Look at that hook echo one more time, uh, Taylor, uh, the, the one down in uh, Dallas County. What, what could you hang on that hook? <laughs> what, what was it? A, a side of beef? A side of beef, um. exactly. <laughs> I mean, you could you could hang a side of beef off that hook. I mean, uh, sometimes you got to bring some levity to that. that, that the, the, the things we talk about in the Weather Service chat. Uh, but again, uh, in all seriousness, we have a tornado warning for Dallas County. Selma's been taken out of the polygon because it's going to be passing south of Selma. This possible tornado is crossing Highway 41, Alabama 41, down around Sardis. It'll be crossing Highway 80 around Casey here in a matter of minutes. And then uh, ultimately coming out into northern Lowndes County, moving in the general direction of either Montgomery or Prattville. Uh, so again, just uh, heads up here, uh, this, this might be the storm of the event, if that's the case, if this thing hits a big population center like that. Montgomery is here, Prattville is here. Again, this is US 82 going up toward Billingsley. That's Alabama Highway 14 right here, Atogaville back over toward uh, Selma. Down here, this is US 80. And between Highway 14 and US 80, we got the Alabama River, which is right here. That kind of snakes its way back over toward Montgomery. And again, we've got a potential tornado passing about uh, five, six, seven miles south of downtown Selma right now, down Highway 41. And again, that's about to cross US 80, and most likely that'll be passing really close to the Alabama River. It looks like it's going to kind of track across the river or near the river as it approaches uh, either Prattville or Montgomery. And I'd say more likely it's going to be closer to Prattville instead of Montgomery. Again, Prattville, Millbrook, Wetumpka, right in through here. This is uh, Autauga County and this is Elmore County. So uh, just there's no warning over here yet, but uh, the Weather Service will be looking to uh, make a decision soon on that. And let's go to WEX05 real quick. Uh, we've got some more uh, viewer video and images coming in. So if we can take uh, WX05, it'll look black to you because uh, the, the initial frame here is black. So uh, here we go. Let's roll this and see what we got. Th yeah, this is uh, some home video. Look at this. I mean, look, wa watch the intensity of the rain and the wind here. Uh, and again, you're going to see it really ramp up here in a minute. And that, I mean, <laughs> again, this looks like a landfalling wow. hurricane here. I mean, uh, goodness gracious. That's what it's looked like over so many uh, Alabama counties tonight with this line of storms passing through. And this is kind of a new dimension, you know, the doorbell camera thing, the, the security cameras, uh, the home cameras. We, we didn't have that uh, 10 
15, 20 years ago, but now we can catch things like meteors and events like that. Uh, the cats love us too. The cat lovers wanted us to know that the uh, cats like to watch uh, Taylor and James on uh, ABC 3340. And we put this guy to sleep. He's out. I mean, he's had, he's had enough of this. Uh, and and it, it's, it is tough when you got young children and you're dealing with middle of the night tornadoes. Uh, but again, uh, thanks to everybody for hanging in there with us. And again, that, that, I just can imagine, how, you know, this is your middle of the night lunch break. Go out there, you get a snack and you're dealing with a, a hurricane over central Alabama, what looks like a hurricane, but that's just a line of uh, nasty storms there. So back to the radar. And again, it, we're coming up on 2.30, so we are going to go back to regular programming here. We've not had a tornado warning in a long time, and we've been yakking away, and uh, the line of storms is, uh, again, we, we they're under severe limits, and this is really the storm of the day right here, this uh, storm in Dallas County that is likely producing a tornado south-southeast of Selma. It's about to cross U.S. 80. And again, this is going to be in the Montgomery television market, and uh, they'll take good care of our friends here in Lowndes and Atauga and Elmore counties, but we'll be watching it with great interest. And again, we're going to come back at three. We'll still do updates every 30 minutes uh, so that we'll do an update at three, three thirty, four, and then our newscast begins at four thirty. Good morning, Alabama. Uh, and uh, Evan's going to be in to uh, take care of that for us. And we will thank Evan for uh, coming in and working. All of us work some strange hours, but he'll be coming in uh, here soon. Uh, but again, as, as we get ready to go back to regular programming, just be aware that we have potential for a tornado, pretty good potential uh, southeast of Selma. And this will be moving awfully close to the Alabama River. And uh, again, uh, everybody between Alabama 14 and US 80 around the river, that's a pretty dangerous storm. And if you're in Prattville, Montgomery, Millbrook, Wetumpka, just heads up. If you don't have a weather radio and don't have WIA on your phone, stay up and watch this. Uh, just stay awake and keep a close eye on this thing because that could be affecting you in about 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And it could very well be packing a tornado when it comes through. And you don't want to be asleep when that happens. You've got to be sheltered. So listen for the tornado warnings if you're in Atauga, Montgomery, or Elmore counties for that storm. And that's going to stay south of where we are here on the television service side. So let's go back. Uh, and here's our new warning here, new tornado warning. Uh, glad they popped that before we go back to programming. So this will include extreme northern lounge and southern Atauga counties. And this will include Atogaville and Prattville. Okay, so uh, this is the community of Booth. Uh, that's uh, uh, right up US 82. And uh, so really anybody along Alabama Highway 14 from Selma over to Atogaville and Prattville, you need to be sheltered. And again, if this is extended out, you can see that this will include uh, El ultimately Elmore County and Millbrook and Wetumpka, which is over here. But it looks like most likely that this will be passing north of the city of Montgomery. The city of Montgomery is right here. And with a little bit of northern, uh, a northern component here to the eastward motion, this will likely carry it uh, toward ultimately Prattville. And that's a pretty good population center here. So. Uh, Atogaville, Prattville, heads up, you are in the polygon. And if you know anybody in Prattville or Atogaville, uh, you might want to call them and say, hey, this is a pretty dangerous storm, and you're in the polygon. I know you don't want to wake up. You don't want to go to the small room and lowest floor and all this stuff, but you got to do that. That's the right thing to do. We do not want to have loss of life this morning. We do not want to have loss of life. That's the sole reason we're here doing this, to mitigate loss of life. And if you can help us in that effort by uh, calling anybody that you might know that lives here and let them know that you're in the Polygon. Polygon does not include Billingsley up in the northern part of the county, which is up here. Uh, again, Elmore County is not involved yet, and Montgomery County is not involved. The only part of Lowndes County, it's the part near the river, near the Alabama River, uh, north of US 80. So it doesn't include Hainville, any place like that. This is the far northern part of uh, Lowndes County. So back to the big picture one more time, and we're going to go back here. It's 2.31. Uh, we will be back at 3, but this line of storms continues to sag south, and uh, really these warnings are pretty much done. Uh, we technically have a small part of Randolph County around Woodland and Newell and Wadawi under a severe thunderstorm warning. 
But for the rest of the line, there are no warnings at all. Uh, yes, heavy rain, gusty, strong winds, some small hail, tremendous amounts of lightning. But they're generally under severe limits as they drop on down to the south. And these storms are coming through Ashland and Lineville now. Sylacauga. Next is going to be Rockford and Clanton. Okay. Uh, so again, that'll be coming through your town here in a matter of minutes. And again, they're under severe limits. And then moving down toward Marion and down toward Demopolis. And that'll keep on dropping to the south. And the rain has ended back in northwest Alabama. And again, the severe weather risk has ended for Tuscaloosa, for Birmingham, for Anniston, for Gadsden, and points north. So uh, we will be back in 30 minutes at 3 o'clock with the next update, sooner if need be. I'm James Spann with Taylor Sorello live in the ABC 3340 Weather Center.